Hello, everybody. Um, good evening. Uh, hope you're uh, doing all well. Welcome to our monthly engagement for another month. Our monthly engagement of the pre-NFP webinar that uh, may be uh, very helpful for yourself to anticipate uh, for today's non-farm payroll figures. My name is uh, Stavros Tusius. I'm the market specialist here at FX Primus in uh, our head offices in Limassol. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, let you know a little, a little thing, few things about um, FX Primus. FX Primus is globally acclaimed for offering one of the fastest and most secure online trading environments available anywhere in the forex industry. Our extra measures in safety have positioned us as a front runner in responsible trading, and we are now setting new standards in safety amongst our counterparts in the forex industry. The company enables clients of all experiences and all levels to trade over 120 instruments, including currency pairs, commodities, CFTs, and also indices. You can, uh, too, also discover an award-winning safe trading environment founded on the proven philosophy of success through security. Our company uh, sets the benchmark in safety for its industry-leading safety mechanisms. We were the first to offer client fund insurance coverage of up to 2.5 million euros per claim and offer third-party monitoring for client withdrawals by boutique client to trust. In FX Primos, we're going the extra mile to offer you protection unseen anywhere else in the industry. Now, when I tell you a little bit about me, I uh, have uh, traded professionally when I was uh, living in London for in Brighton for uh, over a year and uh, successfully for over the past two or three years. And I have decided to um, just take this a step further by entering the Forex market as a market specialist here in uh, Limassol in Cyprus. I decided to do so, um, so that I can pass on my knowledge and my experience to people that are starting right now or to anyone that doesn't know um, a lot about the Forex markets. Okay, so I want to feel free to connect with me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or feel free to also send me an email with any questions you have or anything you want to discuss. And I will get back to you uh, as soon as I can, of course. Now, before we start, I need to read to you a risk disclaimer. Please note that Forex trading and trading in other leverage products involves a significant level of risk. It is not suitable for all investors. Trading financial instruments may result in losses as well as profits, and your losses can be greater than your initial invested capital. Before undertaking any such transactions, you should ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek independent advice if necessary. Any opinions, news, research, analysis, prices, or other information contained on this webinar or linked to from this webinar are provided as general market commentary and do not constitute investment advice. FX Primus or its representatives do not accept liability for any loss or damage, including without limitation to any loss of profit, which may arise directly or indirectly from the use of or reliance on such information. So here's our agenda for today. What we'll uh, actually go through, okay? We'll see uh, the general market tone in general. So how the euro, the dollar, and the European and the US economies have performed, as this uh, report may be uh, setting the tone for um, FOMC, which is at the end of this month, if I'm not mistaken, it's on the 31st of January. We will look at the economist's expectations and they are realistic compared to last month, as well as the headline, the hourly earnings and the unemployment rates. We will then look into the um, employment components of other reports, such as the ISM and non-ISM manufacturing. We will look at the ADP, uh, NFP report, the Challenger Jobs Cut report and how the current market is positioned. So. Um, by that, by saying this, I mean, um, you know, what are we going to see in the market in terms of uh, on, on our charts? We'll most likely see squeezes and low liquidity before the, the event, and then uh, we'll see a break. We'll also check the, the bonds, the commodities, and the equities markets. Uh, as rates, the, the inflation levels and business activity are a major key variables of an economy's health. And then we will go into the few arguments for, um, for or against a good or bad NFP. Okay, and we'll close to how with uh, how to position yourself. There will be no more slides for today, um, so I will jump straight to the chart and also to my laptop and uh, check what is the market tone. Know that I will be taking questions. I want this to be interactive, so if you have any questions relating to what I'm going through at the moment, please uh, feel to uh, ask. So let's just uh, jump straight to to the to the.
to the Forex calendar. What we can do is we can check the um, the general tone of the market. Okay, we can uh, we can see some um, some important events that happened throughout the week. Okay, so we have we can see an, uh, a very good ISA manufacturing PMI a couple of days ago for the US dollar. Okay, we can see the unemployment claims. They were actually they came out better, uh, worse than uh, than uh, than expected, and we also see a revision, a downward revision, um, an upward revision. Sorry, on unemployment claims, which more people are claiming for insurance, and also um, we are expecting the, today's report over here. Um, first factor is a good uh, source of information in regarding the, all the, the reports. Uh, you can check the average uh, hourly earnings, the non-farm parent change, and also the unemployment rate, which are the three key variables, components of uh, this month's non-farm payroll. So um, what also we can do here is normally you can filter and uh, you can find like for uh, banks, for example, um, or inflation or growth, you can you can uh, you can filter and find out what are the interest rates for each country. Now I'm not going to go through this, but knowing that uh, you know the U.S. Uh, did increase their interest rates last week from um, from 1.25 percent to 1.5, and knowing also that the euro rates are nearly zero percent. Uh, then uh, we can see that there is a big divergence between the euro and the and the dollar. Uh, now, what happened uh, in the markets? If we go in our charts, let's take the euro dollar. Oh, one second. So euro dollar fell to around 1.2 or so level. Um, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, when we had the off FOMC. Uh, minutes coming out. Um, they were actually hawkish. On that was on Wednesday, as the, most of the officials supported the a gradual rate hike, as um, raising inflation from tax cuts is likely to come faster. As you have heard, probably it's been in the news quite um, a few times about the Trump's tax bill. So it's been it's been passed through the bill. So. Um, for that reason, we also see uh, a big rise on the stocks because uh, the corporate tax is actually cut down from 30% to 20 or something like this. Uh, in terms of the euro yen, the dollar yen, that was um, actually since uh, the FOMC uh, minutes, that was right here, somewhere near here on Wednesday. And we saw a gradual move up to 113. Okay, and now we see, uh, you know, a move upwards actually is broken the 113 level and it's heading higher. Uh, the US dollar also did started off the 2018 on a negative footing, as you can see right here. Uh, so from, from here actually, downwards, you see started on a negative footing, but it has recovered and almost um, you know, and went to the opposite direction, uh, about 500 pips, uh, 50 pips. Now, what I want to do uh, is take the two important um, purse, which is the euro dollar, of course, and, uh, and the dollar yen. And what I want to do, I want to draw a couple of lines, just um, make sure that we are ready for, um, to, you know, to identify actually some uh, key support and resistance levels. One is uh, over here. One level is uh, down here. Okay, and then the rest we will have to go with uh, some Fibonacci levels. I will explain them a little bit if you'd like, if you have any questions, but after uh, the, um, the release. And also what I would want to do, let's check what we have here. What I could do is just draw a Fibonacci level from there to there as well. 
Okay, so those all those levels are important. You see, we have um, two um, levels joining up at that point. So this is a good uh, level, a good, a strong level, 113.2 on the dollar yen, on the euro dollar. We could do something similar. Uh, okay, the top level is this one. Uh, bottom level of this one, but it's a bit too far from where we are. What we can do is draw our Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high. That also again is uh, is too is too um, is too close with one another, but those levels are rather okay-ish. So we could draw another level from there to there, which is the previous low. So we get that level over here, 1.2024, which is a good level. And for the euro dollar, I don't think there is anything else to, to draw. We can just maybe throw a Fibonacci extension here. And we can check that this level is indeed a, a little bit strong. Now we have put our Fibonacci's, um, you know, we can also, what we would like to do now, I normally, you know, the best, the most pure test um, pair to trade is dollar yen. Um, but normally what one can do is, um, is go and find the bank rates. Bank rates on uh, FX Street, I think it's possible to find them. <clears throat> Rates and charts, rates tables. We can find the the bank rates and see the divergence between central banks. There we go. Actually, we only see the theory, so let's just leave this. So what I'm trying to say is that um, it's very good if we test the interest rates on the banks. And when we see, for example, is what I said at the beginning, we have euro, dollar and dollar yen. Um, we also have euro and the um, interest rate and the uh, United States um, interest rates, which are 1.5 and the other one is zero. So this is a divergence of 1.5. Now, what we would normally want to do when we pair, when we uh, check which pair we want to trade is uh, pick a pair that has a, a larger divergence. Okay. So if any divergence um, bigger than 1.5, for example, uh, between two banks, you know, it's always good, a good pair to, um, technically speaking, to trade. Okay, now if we go back to um, the Forex calendar, we can see the expectations of the economists. The previous um, report did come out 30K better than expected and also 20K lower than the previous report. Okay, while the previous report was also revised down from 261 to 241, to 244, sorry. So the divergence between the actual and the economist's forecasts was 30K less, but today's expectations are only 10K less. So I do think that this expectation is realistic, but I believe revisions are also in play, as the 40K divergence seems a little high to me. Now, if we talk about the votes, um, the, the, there is 74 estimates, okay, 74 estimates make up this 190 expectation. The highest is 240, okay, and the lowest is 130. If we look at the wage growth, uh, that came out worse than expected, but three basic points higher than the last figure, with earnings actually up by 64 cents. Okay, unemployment rate remained the same, but um, at record low. Okay, now what else we, we want to do is we really want to check the employment components of all the other reports because the NFP is the employment 
reports, okay, monthly bombing report for the US. Now, what we want to do is um, check the ISM non manufacturing employment index and also the ISM manufacturing index. This is um, a subscription that I'm using, but you can also check it online. So what we can see is that on November, from October to November, we had a drop in the employment index, okay, of um, two point, um, or nearly two two basic points, okay, and also the uh, on the manufacturing employment index we had uh, two point seven points uh, decrease on the employment. Okay, so both of that has gone down uh, over the past two. Uh, the past report. Okay, the ISM uh, manufacturing employment index. I think it was due on. It was due on. When was it? It was due uh, on uh, on Wednesday. On the past Wednesday. Okay, we're still waiting for the non, which is uh, at 3 p.m. GMT today, which will be after the report. Okay, so this is important things to know and to have in mind. <coughs> And the other thing we can check also on the first calendar is the ADP report. The ADP non-farm employment change, it came out almost 60K, um, better than expectations. It was also, the previous was also revised down just 5K. Okay, but 5K is not a big revision to be honest. Another thing we can do is the jobs, um, the jobs report, the jobs cut, which is the challenger report. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere here. Uh, there we go, yes. So the challenger report is minus 3.6. Um, also, this one is very important to know because uh, it tells us how many people have actually, um, you know, lost their jobs pretty much. So I won't go into more detail for this. Um, let's just check how the markets are positioned for now. Let's just have a quick look. Um, we need to check for squeezes and liquidity. Okay, so if we go back on the 15 minutes, you will see, actually, let's do this. Let me just close all those, and I'm going to just leave on our charts the uh, euro and the dollar. Okay, so let's go back down to the 15 minutes on both, so that we can see what's happening. Okay. So we are seeing um, a little bit of um, high liquidity, I would say. I mean, lower down here in both cases, okay? It lowers down a bit, but here we can see some volatility, which is a bit unusual before the NFP, to be honest. So this would be an interesting one, I think. Um, now, what else we can do as, uh, while we're here? Uh, we can check the, the treasury yields. Let me close this because I keep copy keeps swapping up. Um, there we go. So I have this open here from CNBC. Why we want to check the uh, U.S. Treasury yields is um, because when the yields go up, okay, this is um, this is um, likely to be uh, that the NFP is being priced in for a good result. Okay, now if we check the daily results, we'll see that since yesterday, the uh, the treasury yields fell. Okay, it fell from like 2.5, uh, 2.48 to 2.45. Okay, 2.454. Now this um, uh, this drop is uh, more likely um, occurred because of the unemployment claims. Okay, yesterday. Uh, because they, they came out better than expected, okay? They came out better than expected, and also the previous month there's been a revision down, which means, again, um, you know, we have uh, had more people claiming for for insurance, and that actually is uh, affecting the dollar in a negative way. Okay, so we said so far um, that we check the interest rates from the banks, okay? We check the uh, technicals and see uh, what liquidity and what volatility is in the market. Uh, we check the treasury yields also and all the other reports that they have employment components in as the ISM, then ISM non-manufacturing 
uh, we check the job carry calls and we can also look at the oil okay let me just go back on the charts and uh, I'm just going to add the oil here uh, the oil has been actually in a rally we want this the oil has been on a rally over the past uh, I don't know a long time actually why do we want to look at the oil um, well inflation depends on oil so if inflation is up then the rate is, the rate is low oil has been on a bullish rally so this could be a signal that um, we are having we might see a bad NFP as when the economy slows down okay hence the dollar is getting weaker the oil becomes cheaper and when and, and hence then it's boosting price okay generally oil prices are high right now okay also what we can do is quickly as we're on the charts we can go on the stocks on the index, let's go on the indices let's go on the US indices uh, you see that the US indices are also recording all-time highs all of them and this is because of the tax um, of the tax cut uh, it has been on an upsurge over the past few days all of them if you see they have been on an upsurge okay this is the S&P this is Nasdaq all of them are going up and um, you know this is a, a signal that um, we might have a, a, a poor NFP but uh, as I said you know we have done our, uh, our research for today uh, pretty much in a very easy and um, a way you know and quite effective I would say and what I want to do is now just um, think of it as uh, in, a, in a bigger perspective and uh, have some reasoning and and sort of uh, differentiate the, the good and the bad so in terms of good what did we see that um, that supports a good NFP we saw that the ADP report was actually positive 60k above the expectations okay and also above the previous uh, and we also saw a very good job cuts report which is the challenges great okay so it fell by 3.6 so less people lost their jobs pretty much which is a very good number now in terms of a bad NFP um, we did see that the uh, ISM non-manufacturing and also the uh, manufacturing employment index are both down we said that the um, average where is the average employment rates average uh, hourly earnings uh, they are down okay they oh, uh, the uh, the initial claims raised i'm sorry that is the unemployment uh, the uh, unemployment claims here okay they fell uh, also i have some um, inflation data here and some confidence data the consumer sentiment is also down on the previous report it went from 98.5 to 95.9 which is very important as well and um, also we saw the uh, the average earnings uh, the expectations are high okay uh, actually the expectations are again high than the previous than the previous result which makes it a little bit harder for price to to increase if you see the point okay so um, in terms of how to position yourself let's just close this and go back on the charts uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do now is just uh, obviously do not only look at the headline number it's it's a it's a mistake looking on the other headline number uh, you you need to check uh, how many revisions there are okay we saw the revision on the ADP and also on where else was it so we have a revision on the uh, ADP report unemployment claims revised down and ADP revised down and how big the, uh, the, the divergence is now this is a 5k uh, divergence is not too big okay this is uh, 2k is not too big 
and also what you could uh, see is check the divergence from the last NFP okay so this is this was a down revision of around 20k okay so it's important to keep that in mind um, anything anything above 40k 50k actually is significant 20k is not too big uh, now the focus obviously as I said again it will be the average earnings the non-farm and also the unemployment rate okay now as long as the NFP comes larger than 190 okay and also the hourly earnings I repeat and also the hourly earnings come at uh, 0 0.3 or bigger uh, then we could expect a rally of USD JPY towards the 114 level and on the euro dollar we could expect a, a fall towards to the 120 level okay now if the the data are mixed for example if we see a good NFP number but the average earnings are not meeting the criteria or the unemployment rate has increased then this is mixed okay and we will see whipsos we will see dollar yen and uh, dollar uh, with the euro going up and down okay so um, you know the technicals are very important in this in this scenario because technicals will give you some very good uh, support and resistance levels or uh, also the um, stop out levels okay whether take profits or stop loss now um, without forgetting what is going on on the dollar yen at the moment which is going up you know and by uh, using the information that we have seen about the oil, about the uh, interest rates, about the employment indexes and the components of other reports, um, you know, this NFP report is uh, it could it could come bad the the headline the headline we're talking about we're talking about the headline may come out actually worse than expected okay this is my conclusion for for today's nfp uh, now saying this nothing is always um, you know certain in the forex markets but obviously the more analysis you do the better uh, the results you'll be able to get we we'll definitely are going to see a breakout okay of those levels uh, at some point let's say this one and this one you know this is like a small channel that price is retracing between um, up here as well on the dollar yen we have two support and resistance levels here they are going to be actually um, you know um, heat um, and um, and in my view because the markets are very uh, volatile and very liquid one the, we are actually expecting the NFP and the, re, the, the results uh, it's always better to wait for at least like an hour or so if you decide to position yourself it's better to wait at least an hour wait for the market to settle so that you can see where the direction is um, the direction that the investors want to send the market because if we have mixed results uh, you know I know that sometimes uh, you can benefit but there is also times that you can uh, that will uh, be a big loss for your account so the risks are great um, don't forget that the, this volatility is, is risky okay always uh, use a stop loss and also take profit level and uh, the appropriate sizing if you have an account of like 10k um, you know use one percent for example for a stop loss like hundred dollars one percent two percent maximum if you go all in then you know you could uh, lose your account in one trade so time goes past we'll have another 30 seconds and uh, I will just I will just uh, check what's happening over here so as I said earlier um, do not just um, decide take a decision on the headline number okay there are three very important components here on the US dollar the employment rate the headline number and also the average hourly earnings
Let's refresh one more time and see what's happening. Okay, there we go. So, Euro is going up, Dora is going down. Okay, so the average earnings came as expected, but better than the previous one. <clears throat> so I want you to look now at those levels that I have drawn the lines at. Okay, so we had this first breakdown here, and then price is going to the 61.8. We have the first breakdown here on the euro dollar, and then we have price actually retracing right here now. Okay, so I've been, um, you know, I say that it's very important to draw those levels. They will be your saviors, whether you're actually entering the market or exiting the market. Let's have a look at the results here. Uh, one more time, I need to scroll that down. Let's check what really happened. Okay, so the non-farm payroll came out less than expected, as I have anticipated. The unemployment rate remained the same, which is good. The average earnings as expected, but better than the previous. Right? We're most likely to see a revision on that number as well. 148 is 42K less. Okay. Now, seeing the markets as they move right now, um, if you have any open trades, you know, um, don't risk, don't risk holding them. You know, it's always good to take profit and bank that. Because um, we never know what is going to happen. You know, we might actually see reversal of the market. All these could go down and then reverse. You never know what to expect. Okay, so it's very important to take profit and it's very important to have a stop loss. So um, technical analysis and also fundamental analysis is what will help you um, identify the um, economic um, aspect, you know, uh, the economic um, components and what is happening with the market, what does the inflation tell us, what are the other uh, reports on manufacturing and production tell us. And um, then combine this with the uh, technicals, you will be able most likely to, um, you know, um, to control, to control uh, risk in uh, such a volatile environment on the monthly NFP. Uh, if you have any questions, I would like to let you know that you're, you should feel free to ask. Okay, any sort of questions regarding the NFP or anything else that is related to the markets? <clears throat> so 148 compared to 180, uh, the previous was 228. So the economists actually were pretty you know, not very um, close to the actual price. Um, I did say earlier something about the lowest and highest expectations, right? Let me just check how much that was, because I'm curious to see. Okay, the lowest estimate was 130. And it's, you know, this is more, more closer, more closer to the lowest estimate that one analyst actually, one just one analyst predicted, rather than to the um, 73 estimates that they were actually higher than that. So sometimes um, this is expected in the markets. <clears throat> Uh, 
This is the December's, don't forget this is in the December's report, so we're still talking about 2017, okay? These numbers are for the previous month. Okay, I have a question here by TN. How do you see dollar card reaction to the high lows and we are seeing for the last three weeks? Dollar card, okay, dollar card is not relevant to this, but let's have a look for you. <clears throat> so dollar card, to so the past three weeks, okay. So technically speaking, technically speaking, we have a very big we have a very big move from there to there on the long term. Okay, this is now breaking that level. We'll see if it's gonna break it or not actually. But we also had a false break here. And Let's add this there too, it's too far. Okay, so let's go closer now. So technically speaking, this is now breaking the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement and also the 61.8 retracement, okay? Over the past three weeks, um, I would, guess the past three weeks is somewhere near here. So I don't really see up and downs. Um, it's most likely a down move here. We had some moves up and down here, um, TN, and then we actually have been seeing a drop, a decline of a big decline actually continuing of uh, 500 pips as to today over the past few days, the past few three weeks. So it's been going down, as dollar has been going down in general. Okay, and that is due to many different um, variables. So how do I see this now? Well, if this level spray, if this uh, 23.6 breaks, then this normally, technically speaking, means that price will go down here first and do a double bottom, okay? Unless if this is a false break. So false break could be like price will stop here and then reverse back up. Or it could re stop here, reverse back up, up to this level and then go back down, okay? So this level is crucial, the 61.8 and the 23.6. Is this um, clear? Guys, do we have any more questions related to the NFP or anything I can, uh, I'm able to help you with? You're welcome, Jen. So going back to the results, unemployment rate seems to be stable over the past few releases, which is a good thing. It's at a record low. It's at a record low. Um, the result, the headline is bad. The average hourly earnings, it came out as expected. So it doesn't have much of an effect. Tiana, uh, if I see USD recovering anytime soon. Uh, well, uh, it's something I was, um, I was explaining earlier, uh, within the hour, we should be able to tell whether dollar is going to recover from this, uh, from this uh, massacre, right? Because dollar is actually going down right now. On the euro dollar perspective, we see, we saw an up move of 35 pips. On the euro, on the dollar yen, a move of a, a, a smaller move. 
That might be uh, because yen is also a little bit weak due to its latest, uh, the latest Japanese reports that came out. So that is pushing the dollar up on the on the with the yen and, you know, against the yen. So uh, this for the short term perspective and for the NFP yen. Now, if you're asking for the long term, um, for the long term, um, there is a report that we are have prepared and uh, it's going live it might be live soon about um, our 2018 forecast I've been um, actually I say in there that I expect the dollar to fall within 2018 even further and range a little and then fall a little bit further Okay, and this is now what we see is the whipsaw effect is what I said earlier. We see people, uh, actually people, institutions, okay, mainly are, um, have reached that level and once they did, they start taking profits and they are selling, they are selling, you see that, and they are selling. And we had the same uh, here. Now the dollar is moving back up. Um, so I was saying, I was saying that I'm expecting the, the first hour to tell me where the market is going, are going to head. Okay. So if we turn this to the hourly chart, you know, we, you know, we would want to see a break of this line on the Euro dollar to start um, you know, for any bearish moves and for dollar yen, if we go on the hour chart again. Oh, this actually looks like a, something like a very good correction. Okay, so from the last high, this is a 50%, the 50% ret retracement from the last low. Okay, the 50%, which means that if this heads up, if the direction changes, which is a very possible scenario, then we should be looking to go towards, you know, the 113.3 levels and then 113.6 levels. Okay. Are there any more questions? It's very important to um, set to set stop loss levels and uh, take profit levels, and just let the um, MT4 do the job for you if you decide to position yourself during the NFP. So a pending order is much better most of the times because you want to avoid the emotional burden, uh, you know, having to close a trade yourself and have to decide to close the trade yourself to either take profit or, you know, uh, just um, lose, lose the trade. Guys, I will wait for another minute if you have any more questions. If you do not have any more questions, um, you can obviously send me an email in case that you have um, something comes up in mind later. Okay, I want to remind you my email is stavros.tusios at fxprimos.com <clears throat> This is most likely to stay you know, stay down for the next like 15 minutes or so, stay around that price. We will see how it works out. But the first, within the first hour, so until 4.30, uh, you should receive the first, you should see the first signs for uh, of where, which directions to choose. 
which direction to trade to. Any more questions? A few more seconds, I'll wait. Okay, I would like to thank you for attending another pre-NFP uh, webinar, our monthly engagement. We will um, we have recorded and we will upload and send an email of this webinar to all of you, and we also put it on our YouTube channel um, so that you can go through it again and. Um, be able to maybe start drawing some support resistance levels and some Fibonacci retracements or uh, extensions. Uh, at the end, yes, my email is right here. Stavros to Sios at fxprimers.com. Can you see it? So as I was saying, uh, make sure um, you know you can go through those uh, this recording again. You know you can um, uh, learn how to identify support and resistance levels, and um, also entry levels and exit levels. And don't forget that uh, there is still very high risk when we trade uh, when you position yourself during the NFP. Um, and the second thing I want to remember is that sizing of your orders. It's uh, very important to keep it low to 1%, 2% of your capital. Okay, thank you very much for attending and have a good evening.